Hi there, this is Chris from Moto Legends, the chap in the cap. I'm here today to talk to you about a laminated suit from our Swedish friends at Halvarsons. So before I delve too far into the jacket and pants, I just want to talk a little bit about laminates because laminates are very much of the moment. Everybody at present thinks they need a laminate jacket. And in truth, not everyone does. In fact, many people are better off with a traditional drop liner jacket. I know that many of our, our customers, many people watching this will know exactly what a laminate jacket is, but for those who don't, let me just explain. There are two key forms of construction in a technical waterproof motorcycle jacket or pant. There is drop liner and there is laminate. The classic traditional way of making a waterproof jacket is to have a drop liner. Now in a drop liner garment you have the outer fabric, a cordura or whatever for abrasion resistance. You've then got a waterproof membrane that hangs down inside. It's taped at the shoulders or at the waist. It drops down. That's why it's called a drop liner. It makes for a very comfortable garment because the two materials fold uh, around your body, nice to wear. The downside, if there's a downside, is that in extreme rain, and I'm not talking an hour or two hours or even three hours, but in extended rain, four or five hours, then water can come in, it seeps through this outer fabric, it soaks this outer fabric, water swills around, it can even swill around between the fabric and the membrane. You can hear it swishing occasionally if you've been in the rain a long, long while. The water doesn't necessarily reach the body because the membrane will stop it or should stop it coming through, but it can create for a slightly uncomfortable feeling. All that water can make you feel cold if you're riding along at 70 miles an hour. When you get off the bike, it can take a long while for that garment to dry. So I've had instances where I've ridden all day, I've taken my jacket off, the following morning it was still wet. So that's the downside of a drop liner. It's a weakness, but it's only a weakness if you're doing the kind of miles where that situation can occur, where you're often in the saddle for four, five or more hours in the rain. The superior form of construction, in some ways, is laminate. Now this obviously is a laminate suit. With laminate, you've got the outer fabric, whatever it is, and then you heat seal or bond the waterproof membrane onto it. So in that way, even when it rains heavily, for many, many hours, water cannot get through that fabric because the waterproof membrane that doesn't allow water through it is right up against the fabric. So you do stay drier for longer or the garment stays drier for longer. As I've said, in both instances, or even with a drop liner, you should not get wet, but with a laminate, the water can't get through. So you're not carrying a lot of water. When you stop riding, a drop liner, sorry, a laminate garment will dry out fairly quickly. So for someone who is in the saddle all day, someone who commutes every single day through the winter, a laminate might work. Might work for, for the commuter because one of the issues is even in two hours of rain, or let's say an hour and a half rain when you ride into work, that jacket, a drop liner jacket is going to get quite damp. When you come home in the evening, seven, eight hours later, that jacket can still be unpleasant to wear. So if you're a high mileage commuter, you might want a laminate. If you're a semi-professional rider, an instructor, or someone who just does huge mileages, goes on big tours, you might want laminate, but it's not for everybody. This is an extraordinary laminate jacket, or at least it was when it first came out in the spring of 2018. Now, historically, laminates have been very expensive. Rucker has dominated the market for many years in laminate. Their stuff was always expensive. You would be paying 15, 1600 quid for a laminate suit. Their top of the range Nivala, their best suit was around 2000 pounds. So when this came out, it was priced at 900 pounds. And at the time, that was a bit of a revelation. It was also a very comfortable outfit to wear. Historically, laminates have been three layer. The best what is deemed to be the best three-layer construction is the Gore-Tex Pro Shell. You would have the outer fabric, you'd have the membrane, and then you'd have an inner protective layer. When you get the three layers together, that makes for quite a stiff fabric. So when Halvarsons launched this as a two-layer, it was much more comfortable to wear than most laminated jackets, and it was much less expensive. So here for the first time, we had a jacket or a suit that 
gave you the benefits of laminate for the comfort and the price of a good drop liner suit. It really was a revelation. So the laminated membrane in the Walkia uses Halvarsen's own Dryway Plus membrane. So they don't work with Gore-Tex, but they've worked with Dryway Plus. They have made laminate jackets before, so Halvarsen's know how to make a decent laminate jacket, but it's their own membrane. As I've said, it's two layer, so it's much more comfortable than historically laminate jackets have been. In terms of protection, if we start there, Halvarsons have their own particular way of doing this. Now, the outer fabric, the reason this suit is quite comfortable to wear, they do not use the heaviest, most, ab most abrasion resistant fabrics. Some of the other brands do. So again, Rucker, they use the heaviest duty Cordura throughout. It tends to make for a jacket that's a little bit stiff, that's not nice to walk around in. It's not as comfortable. What Halvarsons does is quite different. They take a lighter fabric and then use a material that they call high art, which is a, an anti-abrasion lining in all the key areas. So they will have it in the shoulders, they will have it down the front, they will have it in all the areas where there is a high risk of sliding down the road in all what we call the zone one areas. But they don't put it in the areas where you don't need it. So they don't put it here, down the side, they don't put it on the inside of the arms because you cannot slide there. So what this enables them to do is to use the armor, the protection in a particularly intelligent way, it makes for a lighter, more comfortable jacket. When you put it on, it doesn't necessarily feel the strongest, safest jacket in the world, but to all intents and purposes, it is a very protective piece. In terms of armor, Halvarsons use their own armor. Um, again, they don't use D3O, which, which many brands in this market do. It's level two armor in the shoulders and the elbows. They have a level two back protector. We don't particularly like that back protector. We find it too big, stiff and heavy. So we have adapted a D3O armor. It affixes with Velcro. So we've taken a piece of D3O. We put a Velcro strip on it. It goes in the back of this. It just adds to the feeling of comfort, but it's every bit as protective as the armor that Halvarsons would have supplied. It is still level two. One of the advantages technically of a laminate jacket is that it vents better and it vents better because when the membrane is bonded onto the outer surface when you have a gap or a vent zip it goes right through to the body in a traditional drop liner jacket you've got the membrane you've got a vent here for ventilation a zip for vent then the air is still obstructed by the waterproof and windproof membrane so a vent in a drop liner jacket still cools you down, but it does it in a slightly different way. It moves around the outside of the membrane. It cools you down, but it doesn't reach directly to the body. So vents in laminated jackets tend to work a wee bit better. Now on this jacket, we've got some vents here. The idea is that those vents, the manufacturers don't like putting vents on the chest anymore because a lot of people th these days riding adventure bikes, they've got a screen. Um, the vents here don't tend to work because you need airflow. So on the shoulders, you tend to get air into those on most bikes. There is, however, one issue with this, one weakness in our view, which is that if you're wearing a, a rucksack and you've got straps there, the air can't reach those. In terms of an exhaust vent, you've got a permanently open yoke at the back, but there's a, a large cover over it, as it were, so there's no danger of rain getting in, um, but Vents work better when air is coming in and then it can exhaust. It stops the jacket kind of blowing up and looking unsightly. So this has a nice exhaust vent to um, compensate for the incoming air. Waterproofing, clearly, is not a problem with this jacket. It's, it's laminated, so it's going to be as dry as anything. The other thing you need, however, is warmth. Another factor that might mitigate against laminate jackets, in theory, is that they are not as warm as drop liner jackets. Laminate jackets, um, when you've got the two layers together, there's no air gap. And an air gap is an insulating layer in a motorcycle jacket. So in a drop liner, you've got the outer fabric here, you've got the membrane here. That gap in between holds air from, from, the, from the body. So a laminate jacket does not start out being particularly warm. This has an inner jacket made from Outlast and Thinsulate. Outlast is very clever stuff. It's used in lots of the very top jackets. Rucker use it a lot in some of their jackets. It stores heat in petroleum molecules, um, not petroleum, 
paraffin molecules in the membrane, and then when you're cold, it plays it back. It's really clever stuff. It was developed for NASA. It's pretty thin, works really well. You'd have to use it in a certain way, if I might digress. If you're going out on a cold day, you can't leave the jacket out in a cold garage overnight. You need to get heat into the inner jacket. So what that means is you must leave it by a radiator to allow it to absorb heat or wear it or take the inner jacket out and wear it before you get on the bike. So it's fantastic stuff, but it's got to be used in a particular way. The inner jacket in this doesn't just rely on the outlast. It's got also some thin tinsula in. So Halvarsons have compensated for the fact that laminate is not naturally warm by putting in a really good quality thermal liner. Other details, um, the jacket has got, like most jackets have, it's got a, a waterproof repellent on the jacket. Now that's not where the main waterproofing comes from. This is called a DWR, a durable water repellent. Pretty much every jacket you buy has one, but it's the effect that when you throw water at a jacket, it pulls and runs off. So that stops water being absorbed in, into the fabric. A DWR on top of a laminate is about as good as you can get. What you have to bear in mind is that that is going to wear out after a while. So a jacket like this, if you're doing high mileage, you need to wash it properly with the proper gear regularly and then reproof it. In terms of um, some of the features and adjusters, you've got a couple of pockets here. You've got pockets on the inside as well. Um, you've got a full length placket, nice at a little touch. This placket closes with, with, with zips, zips and Velcro. Um, so you've got a pocket here. Now, these pockets are technically waterproof because this is a laminate jacket, so the material here is, is laminate. I think you're even safer to use this inside pocket, and if I had something that I really, really wanted to keep dry, if I've got my phone, a wallet, and so on, I would put it in the inside pocket rather than the outer ones. Um, adjusters. Adjusters in the sleeve, what we're trying to do is stop the jacket flapping around in the wind. This depends on the size of your arms and so on, but it's also meant to compensate for when you take the liner out because in theory, when you take the liner out, you create a greater volume in the sleeve. And at that point, you might then want to adjust these and just make them a little bit tighter. You've got a wide opening sleeve. This is important, a jacket like this, you're going to, it's a waterproof jacket, clearly. Almost always, you're going to want to put your um, glove, your glove cuff inside the sleeve. Some people wear their cuffs on the outside. That's the way it was done in the olden days. It's not really the way to do it now, because if you've got your cuff on the outside, rain's going to run, run down the jacket, it's going to run into the fingers. So what you want, that's a wide opening cuff. You put the sleeve of your glove in there. You then do the zip. You then fasten that close there. You've also got some um, um, adjusters on the waist. Reflectors or ref um, high-vis materials. This jacket comes with its own high-vis bib. Um, it's really difficult to put it on and off, off in the dummies, so um, I'm just going to show you, show you there. It's got a zip up the back, you put the elastics over, over your shoulders, so if you want extra visibility at night or in bad conditions, then it comes with its own high-vis bib. But these bits here, they shine up at night like an old-fashioned road sign. It's made of uh, little glass balls. This, if I were to photograph this with a flash camera, it would go bright white. So even though it's a black jacket, this is pretty reflective. That is the same band here. You've got, you've got some stripes here, 3M scotch light type material. This is normal um, reflective material, but these bits are really quite, are quite special. So that's all the positive points about the jacket. Uh, and this is the bit where I get into trouble with Halvarsons because I'm gonna tell you some of the things that we don't like as much about the jacket. Um, because it does have a couple of weak weaknesses. It doesn't apply to everyone, depends on your shape, but this is, these are the things that we sometimes find make this jacket inappropriate for some people. The collar here, it's really stiff. If you have a big neck, you sit on the bike, and it's what we do when somebody comes into the shop. Once we've got this suit on, we want to sit them on the bike because it's fine st standing up, but when you sit on the bike, if this pushes into the collar, into the neck, it can be uncomfortable. Now, in truth, you can normally overcome that by wearing some kind of buff or neck scarf. Um, that takes that, that stiffness away. I think a, a buff anyway is a nice idea because with a collar like, like this, it's nice to have something that stops any air getting into it. But that is, we have, have to say, a potential weakness with this jacket. The other one is the fact that there's very little adjustability 
in this area. It's one of the things that we like so much about Halvarsson's Veen's jacket. It's got elasticated straps, as indeed does their Lux Luxor jacket. It means that we can tighten it so it doesn't flap in the wind. We can make it bigger if you're wearing more base layers. We can make it really tight so it, look, it looks great when you don't have anything on underneath. This jacket, can't really tell on this dummy, but we find it's a wee bit baggy. Now, if you are um, if you've got a bit of a tummy thing going on, it can work really well. But if you're very thin, if you are um, of a certain stature, this jacket does not work well. So you just have to bear that in mind. Again, the best thing, go somewhere, come and see us, go to a Halvarsson dealer, try it on because it's not, it's not a universal fit. Whereas some of their other jackets are, this one, it either works or it doesn't. And if it's baggy here, there's not a lot, a lot we can do about it. So that's the jacket. I think I've covered most of the features. I've missed one thing, which I'll talk about in a second, because I'm going to go on it in a second and talk about the trousers. Um, but the jacket zips to the trousers, as you would expect with any two-piece touring suit. Um, so that's it. I'm going to go on and talk about the trousers now. So with certain minor reservations, we are big fans of the Walkier jacket. But if we like the Walkier jacket, we absolutely love the wish pants that it comes with. They are very flattering, they fit quite tightly. They are obviously as a laminated trouser, they are totally waterproof. They are incredibly comfortable to wear. They are priced, I'm gonna talk about pricing at the end of this, but they're priced just a few quid more than the drop liner pants, but they are lovely to wear. And in fact, even when we're selling the ever popular Veen jackets to someone, we will normally recommend that they take the laminate wish pant with it because for the extra money, why not have the extra waterproofing? So whereas I can put forward an argument that says to someone, you should go for the drop liner jacket, given the riding you do, the amount of miles you do, go for the Veen rather than the Walkia. When it comes to the pants, we just say, really, there's no offset, there's no, um, there's no trade off, go for the wish pant. There is, however, I suppose just one exception to that because it fits um, in a, quite a, a tight fashion. It's a very slim trouser. It's quite a flattering trouser. But if you have great big rugby player thighs, this pair of trousers might just defeat you. So again, when you come and see us, it's the kind of thing you're never going to know, mail order or over the internet. You get them, you try them on, but it's actually only when you try to get on the bike and try to get your leg over that these trousers can be a wee bit restrictive. So what we do here when someone comes and looks at a suit like this, we'll zip it all up, as I've mentioned, we'll get on the bike. If getting your leg up and over the bike is too much, it means that your legs are just too big for these trousers. So that is one of the minor uh, downsides. In terms of the features of the trousers, pretty much mirrors everything on the, on the jacket. It is a dry weight plus two layer membrane. You get level two armor in the hips and the knees. Helvarsons is a fabulous company, really conscientious, really concerned about safety, at times less so about the ultimate levels of comfort. Their armour can be a little bit clunky, so the armour in the knees, it's a little bit old fashioned. It's level two, it's the highest level, but you have to get this armour in absolutely the right place. And again, when you visit us, we would get you on the bike and adjust the armor to get it in the right place. It has to cup the knee perfectly. If it's too high, the armor is so bulky that it's just not nice to wear. So the armor is great, but it has to be in the right position. In terms of a thermal liner, you've got the same outlast and thin shield liner, zips in at the top, and zips in at the legs. It's fantastic. Um, does the same job as, as the liner in the, in the jacket, obviously. Um, vents, we have two pretty good vents here. Vents, one of the things I didn't mention, but I think is, is pretty obvious, the vents only work properly when you've got the thermal layer removed. There's no point, you don't want venting if you've got the thermal layer and you don't want venting when it's, when it's cold. So obviously for the vents to do their job properly, the thermal liner needs to be removed. Um, you've got leather in the seat to stop you sliding around. You've got high arts, the anti-abrasion material in the bum and down the legs all those zone, zone one areas to make sure that this is a trouser that is as safe as it can be, even though it's very comfortable to wear. The way we wear trousers, um, a lot of our customers are obsessed with um, um, denying that their waists have grown since they left school. They had a waist of 32 when they were at school and they're still trying to squeeze into a 32 waist now. We think that's folly. We think you should wear a motorcycle trouser. Don't make it too tight. 
make it a little bit loose. It's nice to have a bit of room because when you sit on the bike, things unfortunately tend to drop. If you've got a tight trouser and you're in the saddle for two or three, three hours, that just becomes uncomfortable. The way we prefer to wear a trouser is to have it loose and then have it suspended on braces. Lots of bikers don't like braces because they have connotations of old people and so on and granddad. But in terms of a motorcycle trouser, we find it's just a more comfortable way to, uh, to ride. Obviously, the braces don't perform quite such a role when you're zipped in, and this has a, a full length 360-degree um, zip. But if ever you get somewhere, you unzip the jacket to take it off. You don't want your trousers falling down. So we would always recommend wearing the braces as well. Um, nice big openings at the bottom of the trousers, so there's no boots. You can't get these over. Um, you might, in extremis, struggle if you had a really heavy duty off-road boot, one of the big plastic job is. But in truth, I don't think you're going to wear a boot like that with a trouser like this. But they will take a, a TCX style clipped off-road looking boot, an adventure boot, um, and certainly a, a touring boot is not a problem. What's nice about these trousers, um, as it is with many Halvarsons trousers, is they come in a short, a regular, and a long length. So one of the things that we love about a, about how Varsons and about this suit is that there are very few people we cannot accommodate in it. I think the jacket goes from a 48, which is pretty small, right up to a 64, maybe even a 66. So most people can be accommodated in this, as indeed they can in the Veen. So that's the suit. It is priced at £900. So that is £500 for the jacket, £400 for the pants. That doesn't include a back protector, that's going to be about another £50 if you go for our D3O with Velcro. But that is, or that was, a pretty amazing price. Now, we're recording this in early 2020 and the market is changing. When this came out in the spring of 2018, it was pretty revelatory. There wasn't a suit on the market that delivered this kind of performance for this kind of money. But things are changing and we are going to be marketing um, a suit very soon from Risha that is a two layer laminate for about 500 pounds. So the whole market is changing. Even Rucker have now come out with a suit that's 1100 pounds. That is a two layer laminate. Some people prefer the Rucker brand and there are certain advantages to the Rucker brand. Their 1100 pound suit actually doesn't have any thermal liner. So you'll need to supply your own solution, either a down liner, a merino or an electric. But £1,100 for a rucker is, pretty, is a pretty amazing figure. Just £200 more than this, although, as I've said, you would need to get your thermal. But what you get with the rucker that you don't get with Halvarsons, you get a six-year warranty. Now, nobody does aftercare service better than Halvarsons. They are just very easy to deal with. If we have a problem, we'll talk to them. If it's a major issue, the jacket's going to be away, way along, a long while. They normally just say, right, give the customer another one. They give the best service, in my view, in this entire industry. They are the most responsive of the brands. But there is a big difference between two years and six years. Because in essence, what it means with this suit, you know, I, I would expect it with the kind of people who are riding this suit, I would expect it to last a good four, five, six years, even more if it's looked after. But the reality is, if this had a problem in year three or year four, and you came to us and said, my suit's leaking, the only response that we can give you really is, that's a real shame, what's your next suit? With a rucker, you are guaranteed to have your suit waterproof unless you've done something heinous to it and you've damaged it, but your waterproofing is guaranteed for the full six years. So. It is still a fabulous package, but there are now, because the laminate market is growing at such a rate, there's a wide array of options. If you're looking for laminate, this is one that should definitely be on your list. But if you came to see us, there are other jackets, that, other jackets and pants, other suits that we could look at. The market has moved on a lot, even in the two years since this suit was first launched. So that's it. That's the Wild Kia and Wish. We think it's fantastic if you want to try it you know where it is. So that was the Wild Kia and its matching wish pant from Halvarsons. If you want a laminated suit, but that's not completely to your requirements, then visit the website www.motolegends.com. We've got lots of different laminated suits on the site. 
If, however, the Wild Kieran Wish do appeal to you, then you can go directly to the relevant page by clicking on the button here. You'll read all the details about the suit, and if you want, you can buy one there and then. Here at Motor Legends, if you buy from us, we try to make things as simple, straightforward, and risk-free as we possibly can. So, anything you buy from us, anything on the website, is free of P&P. &P. You also get free returns. So, if when something arrives, you don't like it, it doesn't fit, it's not quite what you thought it was, then it can come back at our cost. We also give you 12 months to make that decision. So, there's absolutely no rush. We also have what we call a price beat guarantee. Now, lots of retailers have what they call a price match promise. Ours is much better than that. Basically, what it says is, if you find anything that we sell cheaper elsewhere, we will beat that price by 10%. So let's say that you find a jacket that we are selling for 500 pounds, being sold for 450 pounds on someone else's site. We will sell you that jacket or item, whatever it is, for £405. You also have up to a fortnight after you buy something from us to effect that price beat that guarantee. So we make things easy, we make things simple, we make things straightforward, but we also ensure that we are the cheapest. If you would like to receive email bulletins from us in future about new products, then at the top of the website, at the top of the page, there's a piece of script that's called a newsletter sign up. If you click on that, You'll be signed up in a couple of seconds. In future, you'll receive all of our email bulletins. If, however, you prefer to receive your information about new products videographically, then we would be delighted if you wanted to become a subscriber by clicking on the button below right. We are, however, also a shop. Now, you might have seen clips of the shop here on this video. It is not the largest shop in the country. In fact, the footprint is quite small. But because it's attached to our warehouse where we have three floors of motorcycle merchandise. We have over two million pounds worth of merchandise in the building. This is actually the second largest shop in the country. So we have a huge amount of stock, but also we provide a fitting service unlike that that you found in any other motorcycle shop in the country. So for example, if you came to try this Wild Kieran Wish on, we would get you on the bike, we'd get a pair of boots, either boots that you'd bought with you or we'd get a pair of out of stock. We want to make sure that the length of the trousers is right. So we would, would test out whether you need the short, the regular or the long. We would adjust the armour. Armour in this trouser, in this particular trouser, is almost always out of place when it comes um, out of the box, as it were. So we would do that. We would zip it together. We'd sit you on the bike and make sure the sleeve lengths are right. Adjust it all. Make sure you get the right fit. Nothing wrong with, with mail order. We're an internet company, obviously. But if you want to get it right first time, there's no better way than visiting us here in Guildford. We have the largest stocks of Halvarsons in the world. So you will stand a better chance, as I say, of getting it right here than you will almost anywhere else. Anyway, this has been Chris at Moto Legends. I hope to talk to you again soon.